We just got back from a three-day tour in Mongolia, running up and down mountains, meditating with friends, in and out of buses. What was that like? Mongolia is something completely different. You know, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen people like that. And I travel around the world every year, at least twice, right? Deep down, they are really powerful. They're very important. They've been going through all kinds of things in their history. And you feel that. So it's like, it was, it was like coming home. After all those years in the Himalayas, you know, I felt this is our people, I felt like that. We went to a place with the Lama Andre, who was here, and whose house and the house of his family had been destroyed, and the grandmother has actually picked it, built it all up again, you know, which gives you the spirit of the country very dearly, because they, they are right on, you know, always. They do something and things happen, right? It was really, really like being home and, and but it, actually, Kamakaji is like that. I mean, we are family. When we were running up and down the hills or mountains, you know, and down again, you know, and we were told the different things that had been made and then destroyed by non-dharmic forces, you know, and then build up again and so on. It was really beautiful, you know, it was really, really like being home. These terraces are uh, painted uh, by a Mongolian uh, painter with uh, Special Mongolian methods. Oh, He has a mala rosary of 50 heads. It's a small pen, vibrant. They are very difficult to break these people, and they function very directly and and from the heart and out, and that was nice. They all have humble lamas. First you think it's the name of one lama, right? Then you find out everybody's a humble lama. Not really in that way, but every place has humble lamas, right? And that was beautiful. We were sitting in there in his house, and, and he was sitting there, and we were talking. We were giving and taking like that. So we had a good connection of that. This was really like things coming together, which was very nice. It's a place where Kamapakshi came, and Kamapakshi, of course, is known for his countless miracles he pulled out of his sleeves. And this was the first time that the Kamapas influenced the first incarnate lamas of Tibet, right? That their influence came in and really influenced the development of what was going on. One even felt he was having a smile somewhere in a pure land, you know, at seeing that we continued the work there. Well, 
it was clear to see that Diamond Way Buddhism, the most direct and powerful one having to do with causality, having to do with motivation, and finally and most importantly, having to do with view, right, with the way we see the world. That all this was still living there, it was completely, I mean, completely powerful and vibrating in the people who were there, and I, it really touched me, you know. Yeah, one can feel that. One can feel that. I like to see that. Ruins built up again, you know, stuff like that, doing it again, making it happen, and so on. This is something I really like. I have devoted my life to that, and that's what we'll keep doing till they carry me out. <laughs> great experience to meet with this Lama, a gentleman with fine glasses, you know, and everything. His father actually held a direct connection from Tamapakshi the whole way through, you know, and up till, up till today. And there will certainly be things to build on from this experience to go on, to make things happen and so on. <laughs> This feeling of quality and staying together and meeting with the bosses of all the places. I met the leaders of every single group or center that was there. Hearing means long life. I just get a very interesting sign into my hands now. I don't know if you can get it. He was really great. He was wonderful. The main thing, you know, that really caught me, because I mean, I'm usually for big things, and here yeah, I saw small things, right? And we were in the museum, the state museum, which had been hidden away. Some monks and some others had been holding these things in an island where nobody saw it and knew it or spoke about it or anything, right? And this had come in again, and this was incredible art, you know? I mean, I, I'm not a very artistic type, you know, but they took my eyes out of my head. I mean, they were so impressive. I've not seen such beautiful things, you know, such perfect work, you know, down to the smallest screw or, or nail, you know, in anything, you know, that was still standing as there. We went from one with eyes, goggle eyes, and what is it? And they did that, and look at that, and this means that, and you know, we were, we were gone, right? I mean, it was just like that. I'm a bit of a space kind myself, you know, if I, if I go out into all directions. A lot of good things happen in my life. Space. Space is our friend. Thank you very much. Okay. We're good. It was good to see you also out there, you know with all kinds of things on your head, under your arm, you know, stopping, interviewing, making pictures and so on. It was great to see you all. I hope you will be on many of our different escapades and whatever we do, right? You can count on it. Yeah. Okay, good, thank you. Are you flying? <laughs> Going to fly?